Hello, hey. hello. Welcome to our first Revive Online video. Um, we are so happy you're with us. It's, uh, it's great that you can hook into what we're doing. And first of all, we just want to say a big happy Mother's Day happy to you Mother's all. Happy Mother's Day. You know, this is going to be a Mother's Day quite like, uh, quite unlike anything uh, we've had before. Um, and we're probably going to be saying that about a few days going forward yeah. over the next weeks and months. Uh, it's great to have you with us and uh, we hope you enjoy our little video this morning. Um, so normally on Mother's Day, you know, we'll be sitting down for maybe some rare time with family. But with all this going on, maybe you're feeling a bit like this guy. Because of coronavirus, you are going to be quarantined, but you have a choice. Do you A, quarantine with your wife and child, or B? B. 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 That is my favourite meme of the week. Um, it's just nice to bring a little bit of laughter into what is a difficult situation. Uh, so we'll probably have a meme of the week, I reckon, every yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I think so. So get sending us uh, the ones that have made you laugh. Let's let's just you know, be able to have a little bit of joy and laughter, even in difficult circumstances. So we really do just want to big up all of the, the women in our church, whether you're a mother, um, a spiritual mother, spiritual grandparent or a daughter in the house. We just want to really big you up today. And You're awesome. Yeah, say that we love you. Uh, you are mighty women of God and uh, we're believing for great things for you this year. And um, we did buy you some gifts and got them to revive for you to be able to pick up. And then the government told us we had to close. So, yeah, we will get them to you. One day. In some way. Um, but, yeah, just know that the thought was there. Know that the thought was there. You know, we really do love you all. And I particularly just want to... Um, yeah, just put out a shout to the mums that are facing taking on a new role from tomorrow. Uh, for those of us that are having to uh, take on the role of teacher as well. Um, I just want to give you three top tips that I've heard or seen this week that um, have really spoken to me. So first of all is, is remember that you are not the school. That actually our children need to be able to come home, sometimes away from school. So um, just really keep that loving and nurturing environment. Yes, you are doing school things, but you're not turning into a school. Keep this um, place home for your children, a place where they can feel safe and um, be open. Secondly, consider your environments. Me and Ben have spent today clearing out desk areas. We've also put tents with cushions in, in, a, in our family area so that they've got different places they can kind of sit and read and stuff. So just think about the environment, ways to keep them busy and uh, be able to change. And also, um, just want to also say that one that I've seen a lot is um, help them to develop a structure. Allow them to have a say in it so they feel like um, yep. You know, they have some control over what's happening, um, but have a structure for your day. I know we'll be starting our day with a little bit of worship and then 9am, Monday to Friday, Joe Wicks PE. That'll be how we start our day, but we're going to structure it with the children. So there's three top tips for you. And we just want to say we're with you, we're praying for you, and, uh, you know, let's all support each other in this. Let's all support each other as we, as we all adapt to this change. Absolutely. Now, last week I had the privilege of... Um speaking to you in person uh, which we don't have this week unfortunately um, and my, my preach is all around change is coming well change is here it is very it's much here pretty rapidly hasn't it and you know um you know we've we've got to adapt we're trying to adapt as quick as best we can in respect to how we do church you know we are the church you know we don't go to church right uh, the people are the church. We are the this called out community that we're talking about, and that that requires us to to work in a different way. And actually, it's the churches right now that are, are able to adapt and are able to change that are going to really keep people going and keep people motivated and keep people engaged with not only each other but with with God. Yeah. And you know, we talked about um, slow over the the, the the last few weeks, haven't we? Around disrupting the way we we kind of do things now god's taken that to a uh, another level, another level. Um, which we weren't expecting uh, but you know we're here we're gonna do what the you know the best we can and then um, we're gonna take it forward yeah and as innovators if you remember ben's last preach we're like bring on the disruption exactly. <laughs> but for some of you obviously it may be difficult for some of us um it may be that we're not feeling very well either and we just want to really 
uh, say that we're raising you all up in prayer yeah, if yeah. you are one of those people. Okay, so um, over this time, it is, as everyone keeps saying, an unprecedented time. Um, we wanted to just really acknowledge that there may be different things that you're feeling and struggling with right now. And um, when I've prayed about this and when we've, we've kind of chatted about it, we felt there's kind of three things that people will um, be reacting to and feeling in different ways right now. And first of all is the atmosphere. All around us is fear, anxiety, worry, panic. We're seeing um, things that are different, that are changing, different ways of behaviour, uh, panic buying, for example. Yeah. Um, so all around us, there is a heavy atmosphere. And I don't know about you, but I have felt that stress um, just being, you know, out and about going to do the shopping or anything like that. I've picked up on that stress. So um, if that's how you're feeling, if you're picking up on that stuff, we just want to say that um, you don't have to own that. You don't have to kind of receive that, that in God, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm. And um, we've spoken before about the most powerful thing um, for human beings, obviously not not um, more powerful than God, but for us as humans is choice. And um, I just want to really encourage you now to choose not to pick up that feeling of stress and of panic and yeah. um, to rest in him, to spend time with him and also with the ones you love, whether that's face to face or whether that's over um, what various technology. We just we just want to really encourage you to make that choice. And then also Ben talked about the change curve last week and there are um, ways that people uh, um, can react to change. Yeah, that's right. And the first three stages of that, the, the early stages of reacting to change. The shock. Yeah. There's been some shock this week. There has been some shock. Denial. Yep. And that can actually then turn to anger. Yeah. And we have seen denial. We've seen people continuing about their normal uh, way. And I'm sure there are, um, you know, feelings of anger in certain ways as well. So if, if you're feeling any of those, then know that that's probably a reaction to change. And yeah. um, as we said, um, I think it was, yeah, it was me, I said in, in my message, um, that, you know, actually we can be a people that can, that can supernaturally defy the psychological probability of the way we react to change. We have a supernatural patience being slow to anger. We have a supernatural fruits of the spirit. So, you know, um, we don't have to just rely on ourselves and our feelings, but we're able to look to the one uh, who is in control, the one who has this in his hands and um, place our trust in him and just steady ourselves in him. And also the other one we just wanted to quickly touch on is that some of us may well be feeling grief. You know, this is a time of loss. For some people, it may well be a time of loss in terms of losing a loved one. We're praying um, that that's, that's not going to be the case mm. um, for all of our church family, Absolutely. everyone we know. Um, but also, it, it's, a, it's a time of loss in terms of a loss of um, our way of life. Yeah. You know, um, for those of you that have children, you're suddenly not just mum, but you're a homeschool teacher, homeschool teaching dad. Yeah. Um, we are not all going to work, we're working from home. Yeah. Um, you know, so we may not be able to speak to people in the same way. It's a total shift of the way we've done life. Yeah, you know, completely. it's a huge change. And we lost the pubs, restaurants, clubs, <sighs> gyms. 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 Yeah. We lost those yesterday as well. We lost steam rooms and jacuzzis. So genuinely you could be feeling um grief right now, you could be feeling loss. And back on the twenty sixth of May last year, when we lost the lovely Belinda. Ben and I actually did a message called Grief and Hope, where we went through the five stages of grief and linked that into um, the Bible and how you can deal with that with God and also how you can support people who are feeling those things. So there's a link here. And um, we just want to really encourage you that if you feel that you know, you, you're feeling that loss, just have a listen to that message and hopefully it will bring some hope to you. Absolutely. And I just want to finish with a scripture, Romans 12 verse two, many of us will know this scripture. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We've talked about the Bible being a theology of change, yeah. you know, calling us to be transformed in him. Church, we want to encourage you, do not conform to the pattern of this world, to fear, to anxiety, to worry, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let him give you a supernatural peace. So we've got a treat for you now. Um, for those of you who are on Facebook, uh, Peter put out a, a five minute uh, video just, just recently. Uh, we've now got Janice who's also gonna be bringing a little bit of the word for us uh, this morning. 
and uh, yeah, it's, it's great that we can uh, beam into their living room uh, and, uh, and hear from them. And we do just really want to honour Peter and Janice and just thank them um, for all that they've done for us. You know, 20 years of service, we did not expect to have a virtual handover. We did not. Um, but that is what faces at the, us at the moment. So will you be praying for us? Um, but we just want to, as a church, really honour them and thank them for all they've done and get ready for a big celebration Huge. when we can all meet again Huge. together. Over to you. Hello everyone, Revive Church, New Mills. Uh, good morning. It is a wonderful morning. We can't meet together as a congregation, but we're in your own homes and we're one in spirit. And we just want to share a few things with you more this morning, Janice and I. Um, just hope that it helps you and encourages you on this wonderful Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. So we just wanted to talk briefly um just a couple of things that have been speaking to us in, in, the, in the scriptures recently. Um, so so my, my uh, reading is from Mark chapter 11 and verse 11, and then moving down um, to verse 15 through to verse uh, 17. So you'll all be familiar with, with the story, but... Um, it's the time when Jesus had just ridden into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and everybody had been um, adoring him and laying uh, coats and palm leaves before him. And then the kind of story moves on to Jesus observing in the temple. And it just, it just says that Jesus looked carefully around at the things that were happening in the temple in verse 11. And he didn't do anything at that time. He just observed. And then he went away. And the next day, he actually came back and he took action. And we know that he threw the, the money changers' tables over and he, he drove those that were buying and selling out. And he was, he was just very intentional about cleansing the temple for God. And he, he said, you know, basically, you've turned it into a den of thieves, but my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. And so um, as I was thinking about that, because we're living in very strange times, aren't we? We're living in times that we've never been through before. It's all new to us. We've never walked this way before. But the thing is that we can be confident that our God knows exactly what he's doing. And in the same way that Jesus was observing in the temple, the Lord is observing people on the earth and he always knows what he's going to do and I particularly think that what we're going through is a shaking time mm -hmm. it's a time of, of adjustment because what yeah. Jesus did with that shaking he enabled um, righteousness and, and justice to come back in, into the temple. He was telling people, this isn't acceptable. This isn't the way to get to God. This isn't helpful for anybody. And, and so therefore, um, he he created this kind of um, upsurge, if you like, of, of yeah, let's let's just get rid of all this and let's do things differently. This is, this is the way um, it needs to be done. So God knows what he's, we're doing. Sorry, he knows what we're doing. He knows what he's doing and he shakes things and he gives us a chance to change. Um, in this challenging time that we're, we're living in, we've really got a pull together church in, in this strangest of environments. It's yeah. very surreal, mm -hmm. isn't it? You yeah. know, it's almost like you feel that you're, you're in a dream. Yes. Um, and and kind of even, even in a film and you're going to wake up some some morning and it's, it's all going to be oh yeah that was just a really bad dream but actually this is the reality this is what God is doing yeah. we are his people and the last words that I, I want to leave you with uh, is that Jesus quite clearly said that his temple should be a house of prayer for all nations mm -hmm. and, and so as we are moving forward together in this kind of digital church environment we are asking you to pray with us we are asking you to get involved um, we've sent uh, messages out um, online via different mediums we want you to pray if you can fast fast but definitely pray and tomorrow is, is a day of prayer so please get involved and um, yeah 
pray. We need to pray for the nations. We need to pray for our nation. Thanks for that, Janice. So what a great little message there. And then, um, as Janice said, we do really want to be encouraging the church to be praying and fasting, if you can, over this crucial time. Uh, as a leadership, we've decided to pray and fast for 21 days. And um, we will be praying until the evening of the Saturday of Easter. And then we will break the fast on Easter Sunday, I'm sure, with lots of Easter eggs. Sure. Um, so we want to really encourage you to get involved with that to be praying and fasting with us obviously it's a 21 day stint we're not asking you to fast everything and um, just something giving up something over this time it's all about your heart and just really spending time pressing into God and praying um, for the situation that we find ourselves in as a nation and as um, the world with coronavirus but also um, for this crucial period that we're in at Revive Church of the handover and also the new season that we believe God is ushering us into. That's right. Um, that's pretty much it from us today. Um, so enjoy your day. We are going to be sending out a bit more of a communication around what's next. Uh, what does Sundays look like? What we're going to do in the week? Um, this is a very much an intro video. The Sunday service on Revive Online is going to look quite different. So look out for that next week. It's going to be brilliant. Um, and we just hope you have an absolutely amazing Mother's Day. Um, and yeah, have a great day. Bye. Bye.